This is Mrs. Murphy from Weber State University and today we are going to go over computer security. We're going to go over some of the computer's vulnerabilities and we're going to show you how you can protect your data. Now there's lots of different types of intruders that might try and get into your system and we're going to go through what each of these kind of people are and what they do. Hacking has been around even before there has been computers. It started with fr uh, a term called freaking. And there's a gentleman by the name of John Draper. And he found that he could get a Captain Crunch whistle that's found, of course, in Captain Crunch cereal that you eat on, on in the mornings. And he found if he blew that whistle into a phone, it would activate a the phone as if it were a long distance phone call. And so he got away with making many long distance phone calls for free. Uh, he even built a machine that could do several different tones that he could basically control the phone line and do what he wanted it to do. So freaking is illegally manipulating the phone lines, the phone systems, which is basically the first source of our hacking. A hacker is someone who is proficient in a computer system. They take the computers to the limits. They want to see what they can do with the computer. The term hack actually was uh, not necessarily for computers. The term hack means using something for not what it was intended to do. For example, when most people plant gardens, they use some sort of pot they find at a garden gardening store. A hack would be to plant your seeds in, say, an ice cream cone, because that is not what it was intended for, but it still works. And for some people, it works really well. Computer hackers were the same. They were people who used the computer to get, be able to get it to do the things that it shouldn't be able to do. We can thank computer hackers for their idea to create video games. Actually, at the time, that's not what a computer was supposed to do. Now, the media sometimes gets hackers and crackers mixed up. Crackers are the people who break into systems to try and get your money and try and have some sort of malicious intent. Those are the people, those are the criminals that you want to watch out for. A script kitty is a derogatory term. It's an immature hacker, although they can be just as dangerous. They use well-known, easy to find techniques to f exploit weaknesses in computer systems. Now there are two classes of intruders. You have an undirected hacker and they just want to see if they can break into a system. A directed hacker is trying to do some damage or receive something out of the attack though. As with any activist, computer hacktivists are motivated by politics, religion, you name it. They want to expose what they believe is unfair. Some actually just do it for entertainment. The Hacker's Manifesto was written by a hacker shortly after he was arrested. It spells out his belief in his personal motivations for hacking. His article justifies cracking into a system just as an ethical practice. The easiest way for an intruder to get into any system is for the users of that system to not follow sound security practices. Poor passwords, network protocols, malicious software, social engineering, uh, giving out seemingly unimportant information can lead to a security breach. There are always holes in the system, backdoors left by administrators and programmers to give them access to their data, and intruders find these backdoors and exploit them. Uh, sloppy programming is also a factor. If any of the input from the user is left unchecked by the computer program, comp the intruder can inject code into that input and bypass passwords. Um, for example, look at this URL from Google. Just by looking at that URL, you can tell I was searching for funny cat videos. The information is right in the URL. Um, it's okay for, because funny cat videos is really not that sensitive of information. But imagine if that were your bank URL username and password um, after logging into your bank account. Uh, if someone had access to that URL or you sent that URL to someone or some, somehow it slipped out, uh, they'd be able to access all of your online banking from the URL. So banks normally don't put that information in the URLs, which is good. Uh, sloppy pro programming is also responsible. It leaves vulnerabilities where an intruder could cause what's called a buffer overflow. And this is when the intruder stores information into a variable that's too large for that variable to handle.
The extra data overwrites sensitive information. So look at this image on the, on the slide. Uh, suppose that were a username stored into variable 1, and the max size of the username were 7 characters. Uh, if the username were left unchecked because of the, if the check and the size of it, if it was left unchecked because of sloppy programming, the intruder could somehow get into the, that position a username that was longer than seven characters. That would overwrite the information in variable two, as you can see. Another way that crackers can access your data is corrupting your computer with a computer virus. If you ever notice your computer behaving differently, maybe it's slower, having pop-ups, maybe there's disk space that you thought was there and it's no longer there, uh, these are all symptoms that you might have a virus and you'll want to get take some actions to uh, um, get rid of that. Now some of the viruses include uh, a Trojan. A Trojan is a virus that disguises itself as a home harmless program. Maybe you downloaded a video game or a music file, videos, even, even antivirus software uh, could be disguised as a virus itself. So watch out when you're surfing on the web and all of a sudden it comes up and says, you have a virus, click here to prevent it from happening. That's probably a virus, so don't download it. A worm virus does not need to attach itself to a program. It uses a computer network to spread itself throughout the network. Social engineering. This is socially crafting lies to get information from people. Social engineering could be things like leaving an infected USB drive out where someone's bound, bound to find it. The victim wants to be helpful, of course, and find the owner, so they check the contents of the drive by putting in their it into their computer, unknowingly infecting their own computer. Uh, you could get a phone call from someone that says they're your credit card, that your credit card's being used fraudulently, and that you need to give them some information so they can fix it for you. Yeah, yeah, right. That is not your bank. That is social engineering. Phishing is kind of a type of social engineering. If social engineering is aimed at sensitive information or done electronically, then it's called phishing. So this time, instead of receiving a phone call about your credit card, you receive an email. That same email will probably be, probably be sent to as many people that could try to, you know, get money from. So this is phishing. The easiest way to keep a computer network safe is using common sense and safe practices. Uh, you need to create and enforce a security policy, some sort of acceptable use policy that can define the company's, uh, how you use your network and when you should use your network. You need to actually physically safeguard your computer, lock up the computer lab, shred sensitive documents, uh, overwrite any sensitive data, don't just throw away disks, and password protect everything. Um, you can destroy old copies of, uh, not only digital copies, but printed copies of, of anything sensitive. Um, if you can back things up in an off-site so location, put them in a bomb-proof box, something to keep it safe in case there's a fire. Uh, make sure every computer has a good antivirus software on them. There's lots of things you can do to keep your computer safe. One thing you always want to have do to protect your data personally is make sure you have a good password, especially for online banking and any other sensitive information. As you can see in the chart, the longer your password, the longer it would take an intruder to crack your password. You can protect your data from sniffers by encrypting the information. Uh, emails are all sent using encryption techniques. But what encryption does is it uses some sort of encryption key or some, a code to scramble your message so that any intruders couldn't understand any information they might have sent. Another way of protecting your computer network is to use a firewall. Firewall can be software, it could be, use, it could be hardware, it could be both. Um, it acts as a filter between your computer and the external network. It keeps out all the bad uh, and lets in all the things that are supposed to be going into your computer network. Every computer should have some sort of antivirus software to block and deal with their viruses. These antivirus programs, they use a virus signature which is a code that uniquely identifies each of the viruses out there. That way they can determine which files are infected. And viruses are always coming out and they're always changing. For this reason, it's important to keep your database up to date and your software up to date so that it can find those viruses and get rid of them off of your machine. 
Your router acts as another way to protect your computer network. The job of the routers is to move packets or pieces of data to their destination. All information on the internet is specialized. Browsing the internet, accessing your email, online gaming, each of these services use a unique port or opening on the internet where the information travels. And as you're surfing the web, you're, you're, using, er, you're using the service called HTTP. You may have seen that before in the URL. HTTP uses port 80 to transfer data. Email uses POP3 or port 110. I, yeah, that 110. You may have seen POP3 when you configure your email client on your phone or in your computer. Well, what a router does is it sure ensures that only the correct information goes into the correct ports. That way you're securing your network from incorrect or malicious data. The demilitarized zone, or DMZ, protects and separates the external and internal services. The internal services are a little safer because they're protected by the firewall. They need to be. They store information like employee names, addresses, or some client machines behind there, and things that the public does not need to access. Those external services, such as the web server, ooh, you need external people to access their website, of course. Those are a little bit more vulnerable, so they need special protection. So as you can see, there's many threats to a computer network, and the job of computer security is on everyone's shoulders to do their part, from the network administrator's job to keep the network running, to the average user, just one weak password could compromise the entire system. Well, thanks for listening today, guys. We will see you in the next video.